Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So it is late as heck out. It's like 1.30 a.m. or something. Tonight I wanted to show you guys this cool new program that I found called Moon Panorama Maker. And it allows for total automation of huge moon mosaics, like way bigger than you would expect. And this has kind of revolutionized how I do my, uh, my lunar photography myself. Cause I don't know about you guys, but as a deep sky imager, I don't know what any of the craters on the moon are. And like, if I try to do a mosaic where I'm like deep in the middle of the moon, I don't know where I am and I don't know where the next panel is. And this program, Moon Panorama Maker, handles all of that for you. So it's really amazing. And since there was no resources online for YouTube about how to actually use it, I figured I would just make one myself because, you know, I wanted to use it for a long time, but I wasn't sure how easy it would be to use. So that was kind of a barrier of entry for me to actually try using it until I tried and I realized it was actually really, really simple. So I just wanted to illustrate how simple it is to do these moon mosaics of absolutely ridiculous size. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. Interestingly, it doesn't actually start with a moon mosaic because I'm shooting with a mono camera and doing a huge moon mosaic with the mono camera means RGB, RGB, RGB over and over again. And I don't have the hard drive space for that. So what I'm gonna do is actually swap out for a DSLR right now. And we're gonna shoot color data on the moon and we're gonna blend that back into our actual mosaic image later on. Because the, uh, the human eye can't really see color information. So it's not as relevant to get full resolution in color as it is for the luminance, which we'll do with um, the ZWO183MM with a red filter. And yeah, that's gonna be our setup for tonight. So I'm gonna throw on the DSLR and then we're gonna Get to take in some uh, color data really quick. So, see you there. Alrighty, guys. So I am pointed at the moon currently, and there's a bit of haze out, but that's fine. Um, I've got a 60 Canon 60 modified by Spencer's camera on the back. And what we're gonna do is just set up a quick little intervalometer shoot of a couple frames here. I'm gonna shoot about 30, 32 for color. And we're gonna take pictures every like three seconds, four seconds to account for shutter effects. Start trigger after we take a picture. We're going to stop this capture after 32 frames. I'm just kind of picking an arbitrary number, honestly. You just want enough to get some good signal. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna let this roll and we're gonna get some frames here for a color on the moon. I got everything connected. Um, I have the ASI 183 on the back now with the 2X Barlow in, and we're gonna get Moon Panorama Maker set up and ready to actually shoot our mosaic. Once you have Moon Panorama Maker um, installed and everything, you're gonna to wanna to come into Fire Capture, make sure you have it selected under the pre-processing tab. Um, that should be outlined pretty well in the directions as well. I have my mount connected, my camera connected, and everything else. So we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to open Moon Panorama Maker and um, get this thing ready to roll. It's going to take a second here. It's going to pop up this command line, and then we're going to see this blank kind of menu. The first thing you're going to want to do is change your edit configuration just to get your setup all completely set up. And I already have mine set up. I have my location. My elevation is wrong. This should be way bigger. This is like 1200 meters. And my time zone, my camera is set up and my focal length is set up and we have camera automation set to trigger fire capture automatically. And that's pretty important because otherwise it's not really automated. I'll show you the, in the camera tab here as well. We choose our camera specs and how much overlap we want in pixels on the external margin of the moon. So this means how far we want to go off the edge of the moon just to stay safe with our panorama, and as well as how many pixels we want to actually overlap when we shoot our panorama. Those are helpful parameters. Um, I already have all mine set up, but it's pretty straightforward stuff. Focal length, I have a 2X Barlow on my C925, so it's about 4700. I have it a bit longer just to create some extra panels for overlap because focal length measurements totally aren't accurate when you put in a Barlow with this dynamic spacing and stuff like that. So I just have a little bit of leeway on the focal length and that all looks okay to me. Um, one other thing I'm going to check here is I'm capturing to an external SSD and last night's attempt was pretty failed. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this is formatted 
and I'm going to make sure that this is configured in fire capture. A big moon mosaic is going to eat up tons of space. Always a good idea to capture to some sort of external drive and I'm just going to configure that in fire capture here. I'm going to go to capture settings and I'm going to change my capture root directory to my Samsung SSD. We're going to say OK and now everything I capture is going to go to that which will be great. All right, so once you have your configuration and everything ready to go, everything's connected, we're gonna hit restart. Fire capture started and we do have Moon Panorama Maker selected and pre-processing already. That looks good to me, so we're gonna hit enter. And here we go, we see our planned mosaic for the night. And you may notice it's not as many panels as you think, and that's because the camera I'm using is really, really good for this. I'm using a 183mm sensor from ZWO, and that means it's a huge sensor with very tiny pixels, so that allows me to pull out really high amounts of resolution with a small number of panels. It's really optimized for these moon mosaics. It's the perfect camera for it. So first we're going to want to select a landmark to actually align ourselves on, and I'm going to pick Copernicus because it's like the only crater I know. So we're going to hit OK, and the telescope is going to go to Copernicus. Or where it thinks Copernicus is, my go-to is not super accurate, so it's going to go way the heck off, and we're going to have to fine-tune everything. I'm going to need a bit longer exposure. I'm just going to bump my gain, and then we're going to try and look for the moon <laughs> really quick. And I'm just going to look down the barrel of my telescope and try to get a bit close. I'm gonna to have to refocus the telescope as well. So I just come down here and I look at it like it's iron sights and I go until it's aligned in RA there and then I go until it's aligned in deck and then the moon will be on the screen. Now we're just gonna to have to focus everything. I know my sensor looks kind of dirty. Everything looks kind of dirty with super high gain. So you can see we're definitely a bit out of focus. I'm gonna just adjust that really quick. Not too sure which direction to go in, but we're just going to pick a direction and crank on it. I feel like that's wrong. First guess is usually wrong, so you should usually invert it. Alright, so we've actually got the moon now. It's kind of in focus. We're going to want to actually go to Copernicus, so I'm going to get out my hand controller here. And I'm just going to search the moon for good old Copernicus, if I remember where it is. Okay, so we've got Copernicus centered now. I'm going to come into Moon Panorama Maker and we're going to hit enter because we have it centered. And now it's going to go to the moon's limb and we're going to align the camera on the vertical axis with the limb of the moon. So this means that the edge of the moon is going to be up and down in the actual sensor. And this is important, important for the tile alignment because the tile alignment assumed that the limb of the moon was up and down vertically on the sensor. So. That looks pretty good to me. So we're gonna come back to Moon Panorama Maker and we're going to confirm this with Enter. And now we can pretty much start recording so we want to pick our capture settings and everything. What I'm gonna do is just illustrate the capability of going to a panel here. So I could say like, um, you can't click on the actual mosaic, which is kind of annoying. So let's say we wanna to go to tile number nine. I'll say okay. And then we will move to the selected tile. And there we go, tile number nine. So you can see this is going to be really powerful for automating a moon mosaic. It's like the, the only way, as far as I know, to get this good. Let's say next we want to go to um, tile zero and we're just going to check how good it is. So let's say tile zero, we're going to go to tile zero. We're going to compare this with what Moon Panorama Maker has for us. And we can see this is literally about what we expect. Its margin on the top edge isn't perfect, and our seeing is not perfect either, but this is really about it. After we get our capture settings sorted, like our exposure time, there's nothing else we have to tune. So in order to get my exposure, I'm just going to go to the brightest edge of the moon, which looks like panel number 23 to me. So we're going to select panel 23. We're just going to check panel 23 for exposure. I would like to expose a bit fainter just to get a bit better seeing. We'll go a bit higher on the gain and that looks all right to me. I don't think our focus is perfect, but we're going to refocus then. So I'm going to go to a different panel. I'll go to panel three. Okay, select tile. I want to go to tile three. 
move to select the tile. That should include the Terminator, and it does include the Terminator. I'm going to refocus on this. Alrighty guys, everything is configured really well now in Moon Panorama Maker. All that's left to do is hit start on our automated capture run. So we're just going to hit start and it's going to go off to tile zero and it's going to start fire capture and then it's just going to start exposing and it's going to go all around the moon for all the panels we prescribed and it's just going to capture however many frames we save for each panel. We already have our color data so we can blend that in once everything is captured and now it's just a simple waiting game for this whole panorama to capture. Hopefully I can finish it before the meridian flip. I have scheduled 2000 frames per panel which should be a huge amount of storage. Um, I have a two terabyte SSD that I'm capturing too. Hopefully it will be enough. We'll find out after the first capture, but yeah, we just gotta let it run now. So see you guys. So it's a couple days after the fact. I'm gonna show you now how I go through and actually edit together a large mosaic. There's a couple different programs you're going to need, including AutoStacker, Microsoft Ice, and PIP to edit the luminance and the color data for your moon mosaic. So we're gonna start things off here with the program called PIP, which is the planetary imaging preprocessor, I think. We're just gonna go ahead here quickly and add our source files, which are going to be the color images we shot with the DSLR. So I'm just gonna grab all of my color images that I shot, um, input options, blah, 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 whatever. Um, you can ignore most of these. We're going to make sure convert color to monochrome is not checked. We want the color and it's gonna try to get rid of the color. So just make sure you have that unchecked. We're gonna output all of these files as TIFF. You could also use FITS. We just want a format that auto stacker is uh, gonna be able to see. Default, it's gonna go to where the images are. So everything looks fine to me here. I'm gonna start processing and it's gonna spit out all of these files as TIFFs and they're gonna be spat onto our image directory here, which I called Moon Mosaic 2. Here's the color. And in the PIP folder, we will find all of our TIFFs. And this is what AutoStackard is gonna be able to actually edit on because it cannot open CR2s. The world would be a better place if it could, but it can't. Now we have all of our TIFFs. We don't need PIP anymore. Let's go ahead into AutoStackard here. And we're going to go to our image directory and grab all of our TIFFs. And we wanna set this to image files so we can see them. And then we're just gonna select all of them um, since I'm here mostly for color signal and not for details, I'm going to be pretty liberal with how much I stack. I'm going to stack, say, 90% of the frames, maybe kick out the worst couple frames. We're going to set this to surface mode. Improve tracking, sure, and we'll just hit analyze here. And this is going to actually measure the quality of our frames for the rejection, of course. All right, so we have our quality measured now. We just need some align points. I'm going to place them with pretty large boxes here. Just let them auto place looks fine to me and now we just hit stack and let it run and that's going to give us our color image you're going to want to do this with all of your panels as well and it's going to be pretty difficult um, as in it's going to take a long time because there's so many panels and so much data it took me like probably 17 hours to run my stack which i have already finished running an auto stacker, it, it just takes a long time. So hopefully the night of you just let the stack run and then you'll come back in the morning and hopefully have everything stacked. So once you get your color done, make sure you do all of your panels as well. So now we should have a final image for color. So let's go check it out. In the pip folder, we'll have an auto stacker folder and give it a quick auto stretch just to see Okay, maybe auto stretch isn't the move. <laughs> I'm just curious to see the details we got. And that looks fine. Um, the signal will be good. We'll just have to make sure we color balance this data. So I've um, already ran all the stacking for my panels. So I have this big directory here of just moon mosaic tiles that I already have done. And this is what you should have after using auto stacker for all of the, uh, the moon panel images. You can see I have quite a bit here. 
I've chosen to drizzle these at uh, a rate of 1.5 just for a little extra resolution. There is a, a large number of panels and you can see we go straight down the grid here. I stacked about 35% of the panels to get this uh, result. We'll show you how to stitch it later, but first um, we're gonna actually balance the colors in this image. And I'm just gonna use a classic technique here called linear fit. So what I've done here is I've split the RGB channels in PixInsight. I forgot to tell you, I also use PixInsight. And then we're going to get the linear fit process and choosing green as our reference will linear fit all the channels and this should give us a color balanced moon image, which we will then use for the colors. So we're gonna run this on red and the blue channel. And after that's done, we're gonna recompose everything. So get channel combinations, we're gonna grab all of our color channels put them back together. And I'm gonna give this a bit of a histogram stretch just so we can see what's going on. And that looks color balanced to me. We can even give this a check here with curves as well. Give it a bit of a saturation adjustment. See where our colors are at and you can see this looks well color balanced to me. The edge shouldn't be so purple, but we'll desaturate that later. We'll go ahead and save this stretched result in our Moon Mosaic folder. We'll call this color. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into Microsoft Ice. This is the program you're gonna to use to actually stitch together a moon mosaic. And it's very simple, easy to use. You just say a new panorama from images. We just grab our images, open up all of them, say okay, and then stitch them. And that's actually gonna stitch everything together. You have a couple of options of things to do before you stitch as well. You could run deconvolution on each panel individually before you stitch it. You could do wavelets before you stitch it. That's typically how I choose to do it, just to kind of try to avoid artifacts. You can also individually crop each panel to avoid artifacts popping up, and that will help you get a cleaner blend in the end. The image that I just processed, I think I only did deconvolution that's it. Yeah, I only did um, deconvolution and then I stitched everything together. So we will have some blending artifacts to get rid of in the image, which you'll see soon. My seeing wasn't that great the night I shot this, so there's not as many details as there could be. And I was also running into some, uh, some troubles getting the panels to line up correctly, so I didn't get as much data as I could. Uh, you'll find the biggest challenge with Moon Panorama Maker is that you can't really deal with meridian flips, so you either need to shoot it before the meridian or after the meridian and do it quickly because once you get past it, it's kind of, I don't know how to actually account for the meridian flip. So that's the main challenge with that software. So sometimes I prefer to just wait till uh, after the meridian flip and shooting it and going to bed while it shoots, but that creates some challenges, of course, with staying up late usually. So this will run through and then eventually I'll show you the result that I have. So I saved mine as a large Photoshop document because it's too large to be a TIFF. It's like an 800 megapixel file or something. It's just absurdly large, which you'll see in a second because it's taking nine years to load. In fact, I'm gonna make sure I close out some other programs so I can save myself memory. So here's the moon mosaic. It is 26,000 by 31,000 pixels. And you can see it almost went perfectly, but I just barely missed this right edge here. That's the only issues we had during capture. There are a bit of blending artifacts, but we will deal with those in due time. These are very intensive on the computer. As you can see, we can zoom way, way in on this image. It's just massive. To start off with editing, I'm just gonna do a quick stretch on the image. Maybe even do curves instead of levels just to get a better contrast i would say and we're going to try and clip the blacks too because all these panels have a different background level and it's hard to fill in the blank space in the back but i'll show you how i fill in the blank space here right now what we're going to do to fix the blank space in the blend since microsoft ice doesn't usually do a good job we're going to get a paintbrush we're going to get a big brush and i'm just going to sample using alt click on these different points here and i'm just going to paint with the black that I've sampled. And as I go throughout the image, I'll sample black from different spots as well, just to try to keep the blacks more natural. I'm editing this in the daytime, so it's um, hard to see the faint shadows, but if I didn't clip everything properly, then there's gonna be like weird 
various tones of black in the background that's just gonna not be very aesthetically pleasing. And this edge here, which isn't perfect, I'm going to have to treat a bit specially in a second. Make sure all this is all cleaned up in the background. And then we're gonna zoom in here and just clean up this edge of the moon that got a bit messed up. And I will probably clone stamp to get some of this edge back too. So something like that. Then we're gonna get the clone stamp tool and just fix up the small edge. And don't forget, I mean, this panel is like, or this mosaic is huge. So who's gonna zoom into this edge and notice these problems? Probably someone, but there we go. That is a almost perfect moon mosaic. So of course I did mention we will have some stacking artifacts and you can see a couple on the edges here. You could choose to crop each panel individually to not have to deal with this. I was lazy, so I'm coming in here with the Band-Aid tool and just band-aiding my problems away. And there's probably gonna be lots of these throughout the image and we're gonna miss a lot of them. So don't do what I did, just make sure you uh, crop your sub panels before you stitch them. Okay, that takes care of everything I could immediately detect. So what we're gonna do here just quickly is save this. We're gonna save this as Cosmetic Moon, just to identify that I've, you know, cosmetically corrected all the issues we had. Next, we're gonna open up our actual color image and we're going to mix in the color with the real. So the first thing I wanna do is just get this as close as possible to being matched to our actual image. So I'm gonna give this a rotation and I'm actually gonna give it another rotation in here just with Command T to transform and then just actually rotating the image and then I'm gonna flatten it I don't care that the edges are gonna look weird here because it's not a problem. We're not even gonna use the color in the background anyways. So next, um, we wanna try to match the crop and the scale. So here I've, uh, I need to crop way in to the moon. Um, and essentially the goal is we want to align the color data to the luminance data so that we can you know, mix the two. So here we can see our image size is 3,600 on the long axis and here it's 31,000. So we're going to upscale this <laughs> to 31,000 pixels, which is a factor of 10, which is probably a lot, but it worked out on the last <laughs> mosaic I did. So we're gonna do it on this one too. So I'm just trying to get like a, a good rough match of image scale here. There we go, now it's upscaled. and we're going to Command A to copy it. Okay, and then onto our moon image. Oh God, I forgot to set it to RGB. Is it RGB? Okay, it is RGB. Yeah, you wanna make sure your image mode is RGB so that it actually gets the color from the image because we're trying to get color in our moon mosaic. You could just do this mono and it would be like way easier. There we go, so there's our color layer pasted on. And you can see this document is still saving from when I tried to save it like a minute ago. Anyways, our registration is not perfect off the bat, so we're gonna hit Command or Control T and just try to match it here on rotation and scale and translation. So I've just lowered the opacity so I can see the difference between the two images and I just play around with this until it looks good. The hard thing is that it's like very resource intensive at this stage and I don't really know of a good software that can do like just random moon alignment. I'm not sure that even exists. So for now, this is how I do it. And we might even come here and change the factors of the stretch so that um, we stretch horizontal and vertical differently. The problem, if you try to do this with a mono camera in Microsoft Ice, is that Microsoft Ice is gonna stitch every mono channel differently. And you won't get a good color registration between mosaic panels if you're shooting with a mono camera. So it's actually better to not use a mono camera when you're trying to get your colors. And then you can just do a registration like this and just kind of shift the channels. Obviously it's not gonna be perfect on all the creators, but we're just gonna eat the difference and blur the color. And hopefully, you know, that'll fix everything up. There we go, that's our color. So we have a color and a monochrome image. We're gonna set our color layer channel mode to color. So now it's only applying our color layer onto our super high res mosaic, which has not been upscaled at all. So now I can try to just do some editing. I can try saturating the color 
you can see it's gonna need some special tuning. So I'll show you guys how I do that now. So I like to use the camera raw filter to like kind of do my uh, cosmetic corrections on the color channels. And I'll show you that now. I've loaded it by hitting Control Shift A. All right, never mind. We're not going to use the camera raw filter because the image is too big. You know, let's try saturating it, and then we're going to do some more editing. So I'll give it a fair amount of saturation, like so, just to kind of lift the colors a little bit. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to zoom way in, and we're going to look at the color. And obviously there's some color fringing on the sides and on the craters on the top. So I'm going to go to filter, noise, dust and scratches, and I'm going to just nuke the color layer into oblivion with dust and scratches. You know, this is the challenge since our registration wasn't perfect. I just want to get this harsh edge out of the way and I just might completely mask away the color on the edges to avoid that being a problem. I'm gonna hit okay with 114. Okay, so dust and scratch is finished running. And also feel like I should mention, this is kind of a like an unusual moon image. So if you decide you want to like take a different route to editing it, you probably can. This shouldn't serve necessarily as a tutorial. This is just kind of how I'm choosing to go about it for my personal editing. But if you have a better way, definitely feel free to use it. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna mask the edges away here and the color. Uh, it doesn't look good there, but it looks good on the right side of the limb. So what I'm going to do is mask away any color on the far limb because I have a little chromatic aberration with my scope. And I'm just going to make sure that that's all cleaned up. And it looks like I've spotted a couple more stacking artifacts, which we can actually clean up while we're here. I'm going to get the band-aid tool and just try to clean those up. I think there was one on the right here I missed. Yeah. You know, just whenever I run into those, I'll clean them up, but again, if you do your due diligence, unlike me, and just crop your individual tiles to get rid of the stacking artifacts, then you won't have to do that for every single problem, you know, because they shouldn't be in the panorama anyways. The detail on the mountains on the limb are pretty crazy. So I think for these shadow regions where things were too magenta, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to desaturate that or do a, a general color balance adjustment. I'm also going to try lowering the opacity of this to kind of get a more natural desaturation here on this this blue that shouldn't be there. Kind of clear up the blue. That looks better. Okay. So that's like definitely not a bad start for a color composite. There's some red up here on these craters as well. And I'm going to try to take care of raise the opacity of this a lot. Definitely don't want that red. Um, the purple I'm going to try to deal with separately. So just trying to clean up the colors. I'm also going to rotate the image 180 degrees because I don't like the moon in that orientation. Okay, the moon is flipped. I'm also going to crop this just to save on memory, you know, because we don't need that this huge black region up here. It's just going to be eating into our processing time. And if we want a bigger border at the end, then we can just expand the canvas and fill it with black and get that later but this should save us a bit of time in doing curves and sharpening and everything else okay crop is done so now obviously we want to take care of the purple shadows on the right edge i'm just going to flatten this image all right i got this flattened now we're going to try to address the purple shadows on the right hand side so what i'm going to do is just duplicate the layer i'm going to give this a layer mask and i'm going to Paint bucket it black. Okay, then we're gonna get our paintbrush. I'm gonna make it soft, 100% opacity. And we're just gonna come and paint in on these areas I believe to be too purple, which would be there. And I'm gonna hit Control B. And I don't wanna affect the midtones, it's the shadows that are bad. Maybe some midtones and the shadows. But I'm gonna try to do like a little bit of green addition pretty much everywhere. And this might not be the way to do it, honestly. I'll definitely need to do it in some areas more than others and the shadows definitely need a bit more of it. So I'll run it a little bit over green to start and then I'll just drop the opacity until it matches. Then I'll, I'll just duplicate that layer and then I'll paint brush away. Oh, not on the main image. I'm gonna paint away on the mask on these places that I know are too green the black paintbrush so I can get more of the uh, green adjustment effect in the deeper shadows 
And again, just trying to make sure I have everything properly masked. Okay, that's a little bit better. I'm gonna flatten this. And then I'm gonna do some tone curves just to get some better contrast. So I'm gonna get a inverse luminosity mask here just by copying the whole image, hitting the mask button, and then pasting it in here and inverting it. Now we're gonna go Control M and then just play around with the curves. Let's try on oh, just a non-inverted luminosity mask. So I'm, I just went to the mask here and re-inverted it to make it normal again. We'll try some curves on that. It's all right. I'm not fond of how dark the shadows are on the right. And I also think it's like still too saturated. So I think I'm just gonna kind of like give it a blanket desaturation on the right hand side. I'm gonna try to brighten up the right hand side a bit more just so it's a bit more like evenly toned. And I'm also gonna desaturate it because I think it's way overly saturated here in these dark shadows. I wish there was a way to do like a low resolution proof edit of this. And there, hit it with a desaturation. I'm gonna try to match the tone of the blues on the bright side there, so it'll, this has a pretty heavy desaturation on it. And that should also take care of the crater problems we were having down here on the bottom right. I wanna make sure I get in my curves adjustment here. And that looks uh, a lot more evenly balanced to me. Again, you can tell when you zoom in, like it's not, my seeing wasn't that great, so it's not insanely sharp so i mean from this point it's like all aesthetic changes i think from this point i'm gonna just time lapse on but you should uh hopefully have enough inspiration here to go try this yourself at home with a moon panorama maker and at least you'll have the correct tools to kind of get it to this point yourself at home we used a dslr to get color we used a planetary camera to get the loom pip and auto stacker for stacking microsoft ice for the mosaic blending and I use PixInsight for deconvolution, and I'm probably gonna do some wavelets too, but that's everything I've used for this. And let's do a little time-lapse, and then we'll zoom into this image for you when it's done.